I love this old spot in Dublin, where I can get a fine view of the liberties. Not only can I see one liberty, I can see seven liberties. The liberty of St. John outside Newgate, where I'm standing. And further up the street, the liberty of Thomas's Court in Donore. And here in front of me, St. Audience, the Taylor's Hall, in the Lord Mayor's Liberty, and a piece of the Lord Mayor's Wall. And behind that, the spire of Christ Church, who also had a liberty. And across on the left, the green dome of the four courts, the site the Dominicans came to in 1224, three years after the death of St. Dominic, to the liberty of St. Mary's Abbey. And of course, the sixth and seventh liberty is down here on my right, the spire of Patrick's Cathedral, which brings to my mind the liberty of the Archbishop of St. Sepulchre's and the liberty of the Dean and Chapter of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Francis Street. You know, it was outside the walls of old Dublin, and yet it's strange, it wasn't in the liberty of St. John, it wasn't in the liberty of Thomas's court in Denor, it wasn't in the Archbishop's liberty, nor it wasn't in the Dean's liberty. But the bulk of it belonged to a man by the name of Ralph Porter, and it was he was the man responsible for the Franciscan Foundation that gives its name to the street. This brings back memories of Johnny Ray, the halfpenny wafer out of the bucket and the drop of raspberry out of the big bottle. Sure, Horus is nearly as old as Francis Street itself. It's a pity they had to knock down Much Hat's chemist to widen the road. The old Tibbo, sure, it was more than a picture house. It was a university where we learned all about the Blue Nile and the White Nile and Stanley and Livingston and things that we never learned in the schoolroom. That's where we used to queue there, up along the laneway there, and the usher with his belt off, beating us back, and we all clutching our fourpence and our lightnish. Dublin has a great tradition of markets. The people always sold in the street. The markets used to be down around Patrick Street and Nicholas Street. But Lord Ivy wanted to get them away from the cathedral. Also, they wanted to pull down the slum dwellings there to build houses for the people. So they killed two birds with a one stone. They pulled down the slums and put up Ivy Trust buildings for the people and built the Ivy Market to get them in off the street and give them a bit of shelter. Now, a lot of people don't realise that the Ivy Market sells new items as well as second-hand items. Trade has gone off a bit nowadays as to what it was during the war and before the war. You wouldn't get into it, you'd be queuing up to get into it. But nowadays it has slackened down. Of course there's a lot of uh, street traders around the Thomas Street area and the Mead Street area and then the other markets in the vicinity. But the Ivy is still worth a visit. You can get anything from a pair of cowboy boots, a straight pair of card jeans, or you can get grand ass shorts by the thousand. The ivy is worth a visit any day of the week. The stone heads represents the nations we trade with. You can come down yourself and pick out what head that is, and what head your man is, and I see an Indian up there. We must have bought buffaloes off the Indians. And of course, there's another one around the corner here who has a very uh, jocative type of a wink. He must have done a queer deal with us. Street. Right. Street. Street. Very nice. 
The Church of St. Nicholas of Meyer of Francis Street stands on the old Franciscan foundation that was started here in the 13th century. The land was given to the Franciscans by Ralph the Porter, and in the year 1236, the Franciscans came here and started their first monastery. Sure, at one time, it was the parish church, not only for the people around here, it was the parish church for the people living on the Isle of Man, because the Isle of Man was in the archdiocese of St. Nicholas of Myra when it was a pro-cathedral in Dublin. In 1534, Silken Thomas mustered his troops here before marching on Dublin Castle. But the gates of Dublin were closed and he didn't get in. And poor old Silken Thomas and his five uncles were hanged, drawn and quartered at Tyburn. Number 50 Francis Street was one time the Archbishop's Palace, and he hadn't far to go to his church in those days. Moira House, where Frank Duff founded the Lees in Amerdy in 1921. I picked up two books in the Ivory Market there. One is an idea in the working about the Magdalen Hospitals, and the other one, Walking with Mary, is actually Frank Duff's. It's not a coincidence, the two books there were both associations of mercy. That's Frank Duff and Father Tarr and the Lady Legionary celebrating the first anniversary of the foundation of the Legion. Mark Sally West, the one-time residence of the eminent naturalist Caleb Trickled, the man who compiled the first Irish flora. Just imagine, 252 years ago, a fella living up that street who went out every morning with his notebook and his pencil and possibly his magnifying glass recording all the flora and coming back then to Mark Alley to record his old book. There's a fair few antique shops in Francis Street where you can get some nice antiques. Of course, antiques nowadays, when I was a kid, they'd be thrown out in the ash bin, stuff that's called antiques today. The clocks there remind me of the four-faced lawyer down in Cork and his brother up at Griffin Barracks on the South Zerter Road. The four clocks each telling a different time. I'm a buxom fine widow, I live in the spot, in a double and they call it the cure. Me shop and me stall are laid out on the street and me palace consists of one room. At Patrick Street Corner for 45 years you rise to there, I'm telling no lie. And while I stood there, nobody would dare to say black was the white of me eye. You may travel from Clare to the county Kildare, from Drogheda right by Clare to but where would you see a fine widow like me? Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the kiln. Me boys, Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the kiln. Rosell sweet shop. Bullseyes, apple flavour, fruit flavour, bonbon, and old sweet can. 